Hello everyone, welcome in. This is section 3.3, .3, Shapes 3, Human Body Overview, in Mogun's Colossal Class, Fundamentals of Stylized Character Art. So welcome in guys, uh, I'll just cut to the chase here. This was a very dry and long lecture, so be prepared to sit down and uh, thoroughly go over the points that he reviews today, as a lot of it was um, just some really insightful stuff regarding human anatomy and what to look out for. Um, if you're following along with the class, it was about an hour and a half long, which I think is the longest lecture video he has uh, within his course that we've reviewed so far. So um, <laughs> it's definitely a long ride. I'd be ready to take notes because a lot of it is very insightful. Just a debrief as well, he does recommend some exterior resources that I have linked. Um, just for the sake of the artists that he links, I will not be referencing any scans of PDFs of the books that he recommends or anything like that. Um, just out of respect for the artists, like mentioned, and also for the sake of keeping a financial integrity in regards to these reviews and what I have mentioned in my uh, notices at each of the uh, Colossal reviews. Keep in mind, you can find scans and um, other resources online regarding any exterior resources he does mention. Uh, most of them are Korean, just as a heads up, so if you're looking for them, raw scans will not be translated. So if you know Korean, that's great. If you don't, I have no clue in terms of translations. Um, other scans, stuff like that. Um, I'm just going to be sticking solely to what Mogun has mentioned in regards to his work. Now with that, you can stay updated with any further uh, lecture reviews or any other colossal reviews that I've got going on on my channel. If you subscribe, hit the notification bell if that's your thing. Otherwise, we're just going to be jumping right into section 3.3 today. So to start, um, he kind of goes over some very basic principles to keep in mind in terms of proportion as well as just some other good notes before we really dive into the meat and bones of this lecture. So the most important thing he outlines is that a lot of these points are very specific in nature. Um, just to clarify, the entire time through the lecture, he's going over the anatomy of specific parts that you might want to keep in mind while you're drawing the human figure and for your characters. But we're going to be using a different style when we're drawing characters and approaching them just because for the most part, we can generalize a lot of this information and simplify it when we draw it. Depending on your character, you may have to consider more parts than others and, and so forth, and we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, in this video. However, you do not need a very, very strong grasp on most of these things, and if you do, um, they're going to be very particular in nature. So, the most important thing to keep in mind when you're going through this, which is what Mogun prefaces with, is to use other resources to help supplement your further learning. Just be mindful of discrepancies or possible errors that might occur between the uh, resources that you use. There is a lot to cover and a lot of people have approached all of these sections of anatomy very differently and how they are drawn. Um, just use what works best for you. And if you feel like you need supplement information, you can always reach out to other resources. Like faces, the most important element to the human body is the proportions. Keep in mind, you can have all of these things right and if the proportions look weird, it's going to be the thing that stands out most on your character. So above all else, keep these proportions in mind and make sure your character just looks overall balanced. Proportions are normally measured by the head to body ratio. Most people know this. If you don't, it's the length of the head in regards to the body or different parts of the body. And normally that's the standard of measurement used across characters within concept art, character design, etc, etc. In terms of average realistic proportions, you're looking about a 5'8 height or 7.4 heads for the male height. Uh, with a head width of about 23.5 centimeters, this is not really that relevant. Uh, Mogan just kind of briefs it alongside the rest of this info. And then for women, that's going to be 5'3", or about 7.2 heads, with a head width of about 22.3 centimeters. Keep in mind, these are for adult proportions. For younger bodies, the head is generally bigger in proportion to the body. This is something we've touched on already, but Mogan kind of touches back on this uh, throughout the rest of his Colosso lectures. Now for characters, and especially for anime-style uh, drawn characters, the average male height is about 6 to 7 head to body ratio, and a 5.5 to 6.5 for females. Um, he does mention that an 8 to 9 head to body ratio uh, can be used, though they're generally sort of like the beautify standard for anime characters. They're going to have more slender proportions, and because of that, um, they're normally reserved for above average cases where the um, characters are either extremely fit um, in terms of context, they're like models or very attractive looking characters, things like that. The one thing to note about this that Mogun mentions when he uh, says this is that if all your characters have the same standard, then the outliers sort of look homogenous to the rest of the characters. So generally these are saved for above average cases because if all your characters look like this, all your characters will look pretty 
So unless it's like a Bishonen game or something like that, where you have all these love rivals and, you know, they're all attractive and stuff like that, um, generally you might want to save these for specific cases. So that way, within the context of what you're drawing, they stand out a lot more in regards to the other characters that you draw. Now getting into general character proportions that are a little bit more specific, for male characters, the head is going to be our start. As always, the head height is equal to 1, and with that the head width is going to be about a 0.7. Mogun does say that depending on your style, the head width will shrink or expand depending on how wide you want the face. It's all about expression and balance, keep that in mind. The torso, uh, using the head height as our reference point, is going to be a 1.5 height and a 1.2 width. The pelvis, uh, same as the head height, just 1, and then a 1.2 width. And then for the legs, they're going to be the same height as these top three combined, uh, with the calves and legs the same length. I know Mogun kind of uh, touched over this in some of his earlier lectures, but like I said, if we divide the body in half at the pelvis, uh, the same length of the legs are going to be the same height as everything above the pelvis, and then the calves and legs are generally going to be the same length. For female characters, our head height, again, for reference point, is going to be 1. The head width, 0.7, again, the same as the male face. The torso is going to be a 1.3 height and a 1.1 width. The pelvis, a 0.8 height and a 1.1 width. Keep this in mind as this will change depending on how feminine you want your character to sort of look or kind of feel. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about this in a little bit further along in the video. And then the legs, like for male characters, will be about the same height as the top through combined with the calves and legs the same length. Some things to note in regards to these proportions is that the arms should fall to about the mid-thigh line with the elbow located at the ribcage in length. A standard should be set to what works best for the individual, but on average the head will be slightly bigger because we're drawing an anime style which is generally a lot more expressive and cartoony in nature. Uh, female characters will generally have a wider pelvis, like said, and it all depends on how you want your character to look. And proportions will distort when considering perspective, so keep in mind these are all measured in standard of a front-facing character. In most cases you're not drawing a completely front-facing character unless you're doing something like concept art, um, some sort of design. So something like this isn't normally accurate when you're drawing in perspective. Now, the meat and the bones of the lecture are what we call the landmarks of the body. These are going to be the really, really important reference points that if you draw anatomically are going to show a really deeper understanding of your art, and especially depending on what parts are exposed for your character, will actually give a lot more um, detail and appeal to those aspects of the body in your character. Mogun approaches this by uh, targeting these spots first by understanding their bone structure, then understanding the muscles that lay on top of that, and how these two sort of interlace together in order to create the subtleties of each specific landmark. Starting with the bones in regards to each landmark, we're going to start with the collar bones and shoulder bones with the upper arm bone. So this is going to be pretty much everything around the neck at the upper part of the torso. So to start, the collar bones lay on top of the sternum and protrude outwards. So if you touch down at your neck, you can kind of feel them jutting out a little bit from your shoulder. And Mogun does mention this, I don't know if I wrote this anywhere else in the notes, that these actually make a really good point to draw from when after you draw the neck to draw the rest of the shoulder. So it makes it really easy. Uh, most people, if you see any speed paints or anything, they normally draw from the collarbones and then draw out to the shoulders. They're a very good reference point to draw. The shoulder bones connect to the collarbone at the front, with the arm bones in the middle, and they wrap around the body. So that's why these three are lumped together, because your collarbone kind of extends out at the front, You've got your arm bone on the side with your shoulder right there, and then behind you is going to be that shoulder blade, and keep in mind it's going to move around uh, with the collar bones and the rest of this group of bones together. So if you have a character that's moving their arm up or down, the shoulder blade as well as the collar bone and the arm itself are going to move together as a unit, and that's why they're expressed together as one important landmark. Next are the elbows and wrists, and for the elbows, uh, the most important thing to know in terms of the bone structure is that together are the ulna and the radius, which are the bones. And these two bones move together and form the bump of the elbow in the back, which helps distinguish the orientation of the arm. Um, so this is the really obnoxious part. Your funny bone, if you hit it, is what sticks out on the back of your elbow. We draw this reference point as a landmark because it helps distinguish the orientation of the arm and where it's facing. So it helps clear up a little bit of the confusion that may be caused when you're drawing something in 2D and you're still trying to express the perspective and orientation of the character. These two bones at their end are going to mark the wrist because they are sort of the bony two little bones that stick out on the side of your wrist, again helping mark that orientation of the arm and especially the wrist. And keep in mind the rotation of the elbow causes rotation of the wrist. So if you try to rotate your elbow in and out, closer and away from your body, you'll notice that your wrist and your arm will open up um, in conjunction with the elbow. 
Again, these bone structures move together, so that's why they're lumped together overall. Next is the rib cage, which uh, Mogun sort of goes over pretty quickly since we kind of addressed already how to draw an accurate rib cage in his earlier lectures. Um, but it's just an egg shape with a hole in the middle, and it's going to include the sternum, which, like mentioned up here with the collarbones, is sort of like a tie shape um, or a necktie shape, I guess. And it's going to lie in the center of that rib cage. Keep in mind at the top of the sternum is going to be the collarbones and then the obviously the ribs sort of mark around the sternum. So the sternum acts as a very good um, object in order to draw everything in accordance from the upper torso up towards the shoulders. Next are the pelvis and the hip joints. Um, the easiest way to draw the pelvis is just a general triangle shape made from two half circles. What's important to note about the pelvis is the anterior superior iliac spine, which causes the slight protrusion of the pelvis down towards the crotch area, sort of. Um, especially for males or uh, muscular builds on any character, you'll notice this protrusion as it marks the muscles down to the pubis. Um, so it's normally like the V taper sort of line um, that's considered in a lot of male beauty standards. Um, but it also marks as a very important location for the pelvis and how it connects down to the pubis area, sort of. Keep in mind this protrusion is noticeably sharper in males and females. Um, as always, for female uh, proportions, unless they're extremely muscular, you want to go for generally more softer lines in regards to their character. Next are the knees, uh, which are made from four connecting bones, best shaped as two perpendicular rectangles from the femur and the shin, with the patella protruding from the front. The patella is going to be that sort of um, bumpy little thing you feel on the front part of your knee as it faces outwards, and it's actually the bone that marks your kneecap. Um, it's the most important landmark of the knees because it's what draws those sort of two lines you see pretty commonly in anime um, and they help show the orientation of the knee or the leg. The shape will look different depending on the orientation so keep that in mind. You will have to draw the patella um, in different ways unless your style is very very simplified. As for the ankles they're going to consist of the tibia and the fibula which from the ankles come together to form the malleolus and then at this joint the outside protrusion from the joint will lie slightly lower than the inside protrusion. We'll talk a little bit more about how these protrusions sort of create, but it creates a sort of spiral around the leg. And these counterbalances of how the joints are aligned is what helps create um, the sturdiness for your leg to support a lot of your body weight. So keep that in mind in a front view perspective. The outside curve made from this joint at the ankle is going to lie slightly lower than the inside one. It's just those tiny little details that help show the better understanding of the anatomy of the character that you're drawing. Now moving on to the muscles, uh, we're going to go over some muscles that are relevant to some of these bone structures. Some of them will include some of these bone structures. Overall, these are just muscular considerations that you should kind of keep in mind on a basic level for what you're drawing. First, we're going to start with the neck, pecs, and abs, which are grouped together. As mentioned earlier, the collarbones and shoulder blades will border around the neck. Um, the pecs, or the pectoral major, will fall about a third of the length down the rib cage. Uh, if you're following the line of the sternum down the center. Now the abs are kind of a little bit complex to draw, um, but the best way to kind of think about them is that the abs connect the bottom of the rib cage where the rib cage sort of widens on that bottom egg shape with the hole in the middle, and then the middle of the pelvis where it sort of gaps downwards, if that makes sense. Like said, that pelvis shape is sort of like a V shape, and so if we're looking at it from the front, the abs are going to cover all of that middle space made between the rib cage, the bottom of the rib cage, and that V shape down at the pelvis. Now around the rib cage and below the pecs are going to be the serratus anterior, which weaves between the ribs and connect to the abs. Those are the really spicy sort of uh, criss cut abs that you see on like really muscular male characters when you see them from the side. They're generally shown for much more muscular builds, but just keep in mind um, they sort of act in a gridlock pattern just diagonally in the same way that we see six pack abs from the front. Next is going to be the body, which includes the abdomen and the back. The back is another extremely difficult thing to draw in terms of muscular structure, and especially for more muscular characters. But the two most important muscle groups you really got to concern yourself with are going to be the latissimus dorsi and the trapezius. The best way to think about these two is that the latissimus dorsi connects to the back of the ribcage all the way to the top half of the back upwards towards the shoulder blades, which, like I said, are about half the length of the ribs on the front side or about halfway down the back. The best way to think about this is sort of one of those half mini capes um, and sort of that like wrapping around the top skeletal structure of the back. Now the trapezius covers a diamond shape from the neck between the shoulder blades and down the back on top of the lats with a noticeable bump at the C7 vertebrae along the back. Um, this is sort of like a second cape that you wear that's sort of a little bit more diamond shaped and it's going to lie in between 
and on top of the lats that we mentioned just previously. The only thing you really got to note from the traps, um, unless you're drawing really muscular characters, is that the C7 vertebrae is the go-to thing to note when you're drawing along the back. There's going to be that noticeable bump you can feel between your shoulder blades, uh, just down your spine, um, just at the base of your neck, along your back. It's a very exposed location, um, but it's a very subtle thing to draw alongside a character's back. It's that C7 vertebrae. Keep in mind, for female characters, these features will generally be less prominent and the bones will be more noticeable. So obviously you wouldn't draw huge traps and huge lats. Um, instead, you'd sort of draw a little bit more of the protrusions made um, from the bones around these muscles. Again, uh, Mogun mentions, especially for the back, that for more accurate visualization and understanding of the range of movement for these groups, uh, further research is highly recommended. Next is the arm, which is going to include the upper arm and the forearm. Um, with that, we have our deltoid, which protrudes on top of the shoulder. This is going to be the fun muscle that sticks out on the side of your shoulder. Generally, these aren't drawn noticeably unless the character is extremely built. Next, we have the muscles of the forearm, which start at the elbow and connect to the wrist. Keep in mind, one of them extends all the way to the thumb, and these two muscles will rotate in the direction of the thumb. That's why we keep in mind the wrists as one of the prominent landmarks of the body to draw, because they help show a lot of that orientation. Uh, this is very much important if your character is going to be holding something where they're using a lot of their forearm muscles. Those muscles might bulge or show, especially if your character is more muscular. Keep in mind these forearm muscles will show. The next group is going to be the legs, including the thigh and the calf. Um, first, we have our quads, which are located down the middle of the thigh and are surrounded by two muscles on either side. And then you've got your hamstrings on the back of the thigh, which connect to the bottom of the glutes and the muscle on the outside side of the quad. The best example I can think of that helped visualize this is the bunny girl or whatever from My Hero uh, Academia. Um, she's got hugely detailed legs because she's like a superhero that fights with like super strong leg power or whatever. So she's got super built legs. They help show a lot of the muscular structure of the legs um, in her character design. In terms of the calf, one muscle on it will extend from the front of the patella, like I said, our kneecap, uh, down to the side of the ankle and the other extends from the back of the knee to the front of the ankle, which twists downwards around the calf. Like I said, these create that spiral to help create a lot of the tension and strength that our legs hold in order to keep up a lot of our body weight when we're walking or standing up. These muscles will mark the curves of the legs and create a spiral around the length of the leg. So keep in mind, like I said, I'll have that example up here, but these muscles are specifically the ones that help show a little bit more of the subtleties in the curves of uh, the legs of the characters you will draw. Last is the hands and feet group, and starting with the hands. The ratio of the palm to the fingers is about a one-to-one -one in terms of length. The thumb will reach just over the dividing ratio of the palm, so if you stick your hands up in like a little blade, you'll notice that your thumb reaches just over the first set of knuckles, which is exactly where you want them to be. And dividing the finger's length into a length of 10, so say you took one finger, and that full length of the finger is 10, the knuckles of the fingers are placed at a 5 to 3 to 2 ratio along that length. So like I said, if your finger was about the length of 10, the 5, about halfway up that length, will mark the first knuckle. The 3 will mark all the way up to the second knuckle, just above your fingernail. And then that 2 will be just about the length of the fingertip. Now in terms of the thumb, it will follow the same ratio for the knuckles as the other fingers, but it curves at the bottom towards the palm because of that muscle that it attaches to from the forearm. With that, the wrist will generally extend closer to the thumb, so you can keep that in mind. The feet are generally best drawn with the toes curving downwards by the length of the toes, with the big toe being the tallest. Um, he talks about different racial groups and, and profiles having different um, feet structure and anatomical lengths in terms of the toes, but generally that's how most uh, characters are drawn in terms of their feet. Keep in mind the foot is tilted laterally um, due to the outside bottom of the foot making the most contact with the ground where the inside floats. This is also known as a dual arch, and it's best illustrated as if you took one of those curvy lima beans or whatever, and you took it and you balanced it so that the curves were facing down. So if you notice, um, the most important points of uh, contact for that bean, or essentially your foot in this analogy, is going to be the top and the bottom of the bean, or your foot, which is going to mark um, sort of like the base of your toes and then your heel. Because of the shape of it, your inside arch floats, and that's why if you see like footprints in the snow, you generally see like the curved shape. You don't see the full shape of the foot unless someone's rolling their feet in while they walk. So that was a lot of the um, important points to note in regards to structures 
Keep in mind, these are really, really important if you're drawing characters that have exposed skin or exposed body parts and you really want to detail these. Um, it'll make your illustrations look a lot more um, sophisticated in regards to these body parts. Now the last little bit that Mogun covers is about human body stylization and just things to know as you're um, stylizing a lot of these aspects of the character. This stylization includes three important subjects that you'll sort of have to consider when you're um, stylizing these aspects. The first of which being age and that with a younger age you're going to have bigger head, shorter legs and arms, joints are going to be smaller and then grow further in age, um, and then smaller hands and feet. Again these are all uh, trademark aspects of children um, and those will be something you consider depending on the age of the character that you're drawing. Next is personality which is going to detail a lot of the posing that you'll do but will also show how you decide to show off a lot of the elements regarding your character in regards to this. Um, so an inwards pose is going to be for more introverted or defensive characters with an outwards pose for more extroverted or active characters. This is also just a really great way to um, tell a little bit more about your character with how they're presented uh, without having to give like a context to it and just by their design alone. But if you consider this as well, you may not have to draw a lot of these figures if they're introverted and they have like a lot of clothes on or whatever. Um, so this is just something to keep in mind when you're posing your characters. And then last is the body type to keep in mind. For well body shapes, the shoulders are generally wider and females will have wider pelvises, which creates a right side up triangle outline from the pelvis. For younger characters, their silhouettes will have a flatter shape. So from their shoulders down to their pelvis will generally be a more straighter line. And then for male characters, they'll generally have wider shoulders and then a flat taper down to the pelvis, which is going to make that upside down triangle outline. You guys have probably seen this outline like everywhere when uh, seeing like basic how to draw male and female characters. Um, this is sort of where that comes from. Finally are the recommended resources for anatomical studies that Mogun recommends. He recommends a couple others, but these are the two most important ones that he does. Like said, they are in Korean and the links are to the Amazon listings for these products. Again, in Korean, so uh, best of luck if you don't know Korean. <laughs> a quick summary over all of this, because there definitely was a lot. In terms of all the important anatomical features, proportions are going to be the most important uh, in relation to one another on the human body. So keep in mind you can have, like I said, all of these features right. The character looks really sophisticated, it looks really refined, it shows a deeper understanding of these parts. But if the proportions look weird, your whole character is just going to look off. So keep in mind you can focus on all of these aspects and the uh, landmark things to keep in mind, but proportion always reigns supreme over these. So long as your proportions are right, you can simplify these and your character will still generally look correct. Next is to know the important skeletal and muscular landmarks to detail appropriately when drawing characters. Understanding that perspective and character features may change the appearance and orientation of these features. Detailing these will create a more specific and as Mogun describes it, beautiful anatomical drawings. And then last is to understand the important stylizations of the landmark proportions and details of the character anatomy and the best cases to use them. The self-assigned homework, honestly, I couldn't think of anything besides just working anatomical studies. You guys have probably seen gazillions of these, especially hands. Everyone loves doing hands because they're complicated as hell to draw. But just try various studies of the skeletal and muscular landmarks with different body types and style considerations, and then maybe supplement the content reviewed with other resources as needed and recommended. This is probably going to be a homework that plays you for the rest of your time as an artist. But as Mogun mentions, the stronger that you can draw these facets that really help describe a little bit more of the subtleties of the character, the more beautiful you will generally draw your character as well. So that was section 3.3. Like I said, kind of a long stretch, but a lot of important anatomical considerations to draw. And especially if you're trying to draw more exposed characters, or if you have a more detailed uh, style, these are going to be very, very important for you in drawing very beautiful characters or characters that have a little bit more to show in regards to their character design. As always, you can keep on top of lectures like these, as well as other content of mine uh, up on my socials, which you can check out here. I'll put them on the screen. You can ask me any sorts of questions if you have in regards to this lecture, any other lectures or just general questions you may have for me on my socials. My most active ones are probably Twitter, Insta, and Discord, specifically Discord, so you should definitely join the server if you haven't already. But hopefully, um, a lot of this lecture review will help clarify a lot of those questions you may have. As always, thank you guys so much for joining in to this lecture review. Next, we're going to be shaping the human body, and as Mogun describes, we're actually going to be seeing the um, sort of more realistic approach that we have when considering all these things and drawing human anatomy. So do stay tuned in for that. 
in regards to the next episode in this YouTube series. Really exciting stuff to look forward to, so hopefully I will see you guys in section 3.4. And as always, I hope you guys take it easy and have a good day. Bye-bye now.